Um, you can see one reason why Carla and I sort of meshed in the making of that film with her incredible musical sense which she translates into visuals and etc and blah blah. Um, we invite Lindsay Pollock to join us. One, while Lindsay's coming up, we were wondering what the unifying thread was with playing with Lindsay, apart from the fact that we both played at the original Aquarius Festival, but the film is partly my story of looking for an ideal sound in a violin. And Lindsay's life path since then has been looking for and creating the ideal sound. And um, here we are once again. In my case, it's, it was in the area of wind instruments. I was on my way to a, a science degree. I, I was planning to be a neurophysiologist and then um, the Aquarius Festival happened, amongst other things. And I ended up, I had also just before coming here or about a year before, discovered a bamboo grove and made my first bamboo flute and I just fell in love with instrument making. So it's a sort of a, also a parallel journey like Harry's but in, in the world of wind. So it started off making bamboo flutes and the very first place where I um, really got involved in community instrument making workshops was here at Nimbin in 1973 um, where I for all the days of the festival, ran a number of bamboo flute making workshops and I thought it might be appropriate while playing with Romano in this piece that we're going to do to actually have a little instrument making workshop right here. Um, but I'm going to do it as a, as a little demo. I'm going to make a very simple clarinet out of a piece of paper, maestro.
Maestro, 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 That's all right. It was quite nice being in that cave. I enjoyed it. Okay, so I have now my tube, a potential clarinet. I'm just going to add a reed. But first, if I could ask for a middle C, please. So Romano and I have been playing sort of since we first met when we were 16 or 17. And uh, one of the things that we did was um, we had a group called the Paranormal Music Society in which we would improvise. Everything that we did was based on requests from the audience. Um, we're not going to do the request thing tonight, but we're going to improvise different pieces so they're not, they haven't been pre-written. We've just got a few little things like the next piece, for example, we know it's in... G minor, and I know I'm going to play this instrument here, which is um, 
one of the most recent instruments that I've sort of uh, invented. It's based on an Armenian duduk. It's a chromatic duduk, however. It's um, rather than just being able to play the seven notes in the octave, it's got all um, 11 or 12 notes, so it's totally chromatic. Uh, it's made out of a beautiful timber called Gigi. So that's a, a Western desert timber.
Thanks. Um, another recent instrument in um, my collection of self-invented instruments. This is called a silly sax. Um, but it's called silly sax not because it's silly, but it's cylindrical. So it's, if you just look at the bore, um, even though on the outside it's sort of, you can see the changing shape, it's actually just a straight cylindrical bore, just like a, exactly like a clarinet. But this branch tube here um, actually totally changes the physics of it, so it turns it from a, a clarinet into a, a saxophone sound, as you'll hear. Once again, we don't know really what we're going to, to play, except it's going to be a 5 eight one, yeah. E, yeah. I think E minor we were going to do it in.
Romano is moving over now to bring back the last violin. And this instrument here I called Crow um, because it's made from crow's ash. And um, it's a little bit tricky, this one, because it's, I've actually sliced the timber in two, opened it out, and then routed a, a curly bore that goes backwards and forwards. So actually, if you stretch out that, that curly bore, it would be about that long. So the, the actual um, bore is going sort of backwards and forwards there. And where it hits the surface, um, there's a finger hole, it means the finger holes can be nice and close together as opposed to being quite far apart. So crow sounds like this. Oh man, that's nuts. <laughs> so it's in the range of a bass clarinet. So let's see what we can do with these two instruments.
Thank you. We'd like to invite Carla to join us on stage. We're going to finish off the night with one last piece with the three of us together. Once again, we've got a vague structure for this. And we're going to start off, most importantly, with th this sound that you're going to hear coming in is actually the sound of Earth that's been recorded by NASA um, from, obviously, from outer space. So we're just going to use that as the, as the basis in the beginning of this piece.
<laughs> Thanks very much, everybody. Last word from the director. <laughs> thank you, thank you for coming. <laughs> You're going to have to make more noise than that to, get, to squeeze more out of these guys. Come on. <laughs>